We can't even put a pier into Gaza without it falling down and blowing over and rolling into the sea. Hi, everybody. I'm Bill Whittle here with Steve Green and Scott Ott. And um, here are some photos guaranteed to uh, to increase your confidence in, in American engineering and military prowess. Shortly after June 6, 1944, the United States and Great Britain had a problem, and that problem was how do we get enough supplies into Europe to keep the war going? And they came up with something called a Mulberry Harbor. One of them was destroyed in a storm. The other one lasted, the remains are still there today. Uh, that was a big achievement, and we were much smaller than now. Uh, this is the uh, current state of the famed uh, Gaza Pier, onto which a limited number of supplies were supposed to have been dropped. Uh, it has burned down, fallen over, and fell into the swamp, basically. Uh, a number of army ships, although I'm not entirely ter sure that that term is not an uh, oxymoron on itself, have, have run aground. I suppose that's what army ships really basically yearn to do anyway, but all kidding aside, this has not been exactly a, a, uh, a clockwork operation. Uh, Scott, this nobody expects us to have well, let me rephrase that, because uh, the more I think about it, the more I realize that's wrong. I was going to say nobody expects us to have the same kind of prowess that we had during World War II, but, but the more I think about it, the more I realize this should be much, much, yes. much easier today. And, and we can't even take a long walk off a short pier uh, <laughs> without, without messing it up. Well, under the best of circumstances, building a pier like this is is difficult. Building those mulberry harbors, as you pointed out, uh, one was very quickly— Under fire. Yeah, one was very quickly destroyed. The other one lasted, I believe it was just a few months. Uh, but in that time, they were able to transfer a huge amount of, uh, uh, you know, Stuff. personnel and arms and, and supplies, logistical yeah. supplies and all of those kinds of things. Um I'm I'm stunned, frankly, that there's not already a permanent pier there, but I guess I shouldn't be because you've got a whole section of the world that still thinks that it would be great if it were the 1300s and uh, that we don't need to make these kind of advances. Um, I'm, I'm especially saddened by the huge amount of money the U.S. taxpayers have put into this, this boondoggle um, to see it failing the way it is. And frankly, for uh, the handful of innocents... <laughs> in the territory that they were trying to get the food to um, who are not going to benefit from this huge uh, uh, largesse that we've shared with them. Um, but y you would think, Bill, like you said, that we, we have learned a few things in the past 70 years or so and that we would be better at building things, and we are, um, and that we would, be, we would be able to do things more efficiently and, and more quickly. And we've got a whole... Uh, industry of project management that really didn't exist up until somewhat recently in history, where there are people whose expertise is doing these massive kinds of projects and coordinating all these elements. And you would think nobody would be better than that, uh, at that, than the U.S. military. Um, but there are a lot of things I would think that turn out to not be so, I suppose. Yeah, there's a lot of that going around these days. Um, Steve, you know, you can never really quantify these things. These things are always just questions left to history. But I am uh, certainly of the belief that the debacle of Biden's withdrawal from Afghanistan, it may not have, it certainly didn't cause Vladimir Putin to invade Ukraine. Those are plans he had already. But it certainly didn't do much to slow him down in terms of what is the adversary's uh, resolve level and, and competence It factored level. into his decision matrix at, for sure, yeah. I, 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 think it, I think it did. And and looking at this pier, I, I find myself thinking one of two things. Either we can't do something as simple as a pier in, in, in you know, basically a relatively calm area of the Mediterranean Sea, or we can do it, but we're not doing it. And either way, I don't like the message that that sends to, um, to our adversaries. There's nothing more certain to get you into a, a, a war or have people continue their aggression against you than, than, um, than the appearance of weakness or, or a probably, I'd say, even more importantly, incompetence. Yeah, actually, Bill, I'm, I'm actually here to defend Joe Biden. When he announced this, this pier that took us like 60 days just to get the army boats over there, um, he promised no boots on the ground. He never said anything about boats on the ground. 
<laughs> or, or, or boots in the water, because yeah, yeah. Um, a, a number of those supplies, oh. I think hundreds of millions of dollars but, of those supplies have gone straight to Hamas. Some of million. it washed up on Israel. Yeah, but about yeah, 600 million. Some of it washed up on Israel. Yeah. and the, Great. Well, well, it's 600 million here. And Hamas there. steals the supplies and they sell them to the... By the way, nobody is starving in Gaza. Or if they are, it's because Hamas is hoarding all the supplies that, that we and the other idiots send to them. Um, what's remarkable is, Bill, you mentioned... Uh, D-Day, June 6, 1944, which was an amazing thing. Basically, we lifted uh, by air and by sea a medium-sized town and moved it over rough waters under fire. Mm-hmm. And and in addition to all the, the men and their supplies and the fuel and everything else, uh, there there's an air battle going on. There, there are all the ships involved. And it was, it was one of the most complex undertakings in human history up until that point. And three days later, I believe it was three days later, on the other side of the world, we did the same damn thing in the Pacific Ocean in Saipan. Uh, there were hmm. there were fewer men involved. I want to say eighty or ninety thousand instead of one hundred and twenty thousand. But the naval operation was even bigger because there were just a lot more warships mm-hmm. involved, uh, and right. we were able to do two of these things on opposite sides of the world virtually at the same time and then there were ingenious things like i love it's one of my favorite acronyms pluto uh pipeline under the ocean and that was the fuel line we ran under the english channel to to keep those pump the gas that we need to keep in france just just amazing what we could do well because we had serious people with a serious mission who took it seriously um, and now we have Joe Biden, who thinks that the army is his photo op to win voters in uh, Muslim voters in Michigan. Um, and the thing is, if you're going to do that kind of thing, if you're going to have what's essentially a PR stunt, you've got to deliver the images. You want to, you you know, you want to see the uh, the friendly multi ethnic crew, you know, delivering the supplies. Uh, you know, on to shore, and then you want to see the, the the happy Gazans, you know, with their MREs, and oh, they're so grateful for all of that. And instead, <laughs> Biden's got a PR the disaster wreckage. of his freaking pier up on the beach, along with a couple of boats. Uh, the haplessness, Bill, China looks at this and says, they can't build a pier in the Mediterranean. Why don't we just take Taiwan? Well, there's that that is certainly part of the main reason why I'm talking about this today. I'll tell you what I, what my first uh, thought it was when I saw these pictures uh, earlier today on Instapundit. Uh, it reminded me of Desert One. Uh, for those of you who may not remember, during the hostage crisis in 1979 and into 1980, hmm. uh, there was late in the Carter administration a rescue attempt made to actually go in there with helicopters and rescue our hostages from the um, U.S. Embassy in, in um, Tehran. And the first stage, the very first stage, the primary part, just before even, we haven't even started the operation yet, a number of transports, C-130 transports and helicopters were to meet out in the middle of nowhere in a location called Desert One. And because of uh, dust clouds and sandstorms, the kind of things you would expect to find out in the middle of a desert, helicopters collided into transport planes and uh, there was nothing but burned wreckage. We left the dead behind, we left the equipment behind, and we just took off. And all that was left was this burned out spot on the desert, which the Iranian leadership arrived at a few hours later and left us looking like this is a superpower. This is what we're supposed to do. The consequences are not this high in this particular case, but I do wonder if this is uh, uh, just a fluke or whether our actual capability has degraded to this point where we can't do something this simple. And by the way, let's not forget, this is not just an international issue dealing with the military. This is the kind of thing that we have to be able to do domestically in the case of, of natural disasters. We have to be able to be able to confidently and competently and quickly do this kind of thing and do it well. I've always assumed that that was just un, that was, was just taken for red, but I'm not entirely sure about that anymore. The only thing I will say that is possibly positive about this is that there is a contender in the presidential election of 2024 who seems to see the same kind of things that I do, and that is that the American uh, military has degraded in competence, in lethality, and uh, morale disastrously in the last four years. And uh, 
fortunately, what we learned from Desert One is that we need special forces, that we need highly trained specialist groups to do these kind of special missions. It was Desert One that got us uh, Delta Team and, and all of the successes that followed in the Gulf War several years later were a result of that debacle out there in the desert. As I said earlier, this is not that same scale of debacle, but it doesn't exactly fill me with confidence. And if this is the image of uh, America at work doing its level best, then um, we not only have some work to do, we're creating problems for ourselves that are going to show up downstream. And I think we're pretty, pretty certain about that. For Steve Green and Scott Ott, I'm Bill Whittle. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time here on Right Angle.